Well, hello and welcome to this devotion for our missions week from the Seventh-day Baptist Missionary Society. I am Nate Crandall, pastor of the Milton Seventh-day Baptist Church, and I will be guiding you through the last four of the seven mandates uh, for mission. Today's mandate is stewardship. And so uh, let's get right into it and begin with prayer. Lord, we praise you for this opportunity to be able to focus our attention on the mandate that you have given to us. And we pray, oh God, that you open our hearts to the truth of your word and the leading of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to focus <clears throat> this morning on a text from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 21, if you want to follow along this text focusing on the concept of stewardship. So Jesus is uh, telling a parable. Let me read this for you. Um, <clears throat> this parable is about the kingdom of heaven. So he says, The kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. Then he went away. He who had received five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of these servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had five, uh, received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to ask the question of this uh, text of scripture. What is Jesus saying? We want to get into what his... Uh, he's trying to communicate not only to his audience, but to us as well. Now, first thing we should make note of is that the parable concerns servants of a master. The kind of servant is one that can clearly be trusted with a great deal of wealth, since by uh, a talent by some measures was worth 20 years of wages for day laborers. The master's expectation was for his servant's to use that money to make more money. That is in fact what two of the three did. The two that made money were commended as good and faithful servants. They were faithful to use the talents for the purpose for which he had given it to them. There are many other aspects of this parable that we can look at, but I just wanna stop right there and make the connection that the Lord used this parable to describe what the kingdom of heaven was like. For the people of the kingdom of heaven, this is a very important teaching about stewardship. A steward is responsible for property and the correct management of that property. A steward will have to give an account uh, to the owner as to how he has, uh, has done that management. A good steward follows the will and intent of the owner. A bad steward is careless about the owner's instructions. Now, later on, on in this parable, we see that the wicked and lazy servant did not act in accordance with the wishes of his master, and he was punished for it. Well, what does this mean for us in regards to stewardship? Like the servants in the parable, we have been entrusted with something very valuable. And Jesus, our Lord and Master, expects us to use it for his purposes. As his servants, we don't make decisions on uh, how we serve. We make decisions um, basically on whether or not we will serve. And as good and faithful servants, we do what our Master uh, requests us and commands us to do. Uh, as his servants, our, res our response, our role is to respond faithfully to the best of our ability to follow through with these instructions. We can't be considered good and faithful if we fail to do this. 
Often the discussion of stewardship falls into one of three categories. You may have heard this before, time, talents, and treasure. The Lord has given us all time, talents, talents in this case, not the money, but talents meaning spiritual gifts, abilities, um, and, uh, and skills. Time, talents, and financial resources. To be a good steward of these means that we must first understand that ultimately they do not belong to us. They are given to us on loan from the Lord. He's loaned them to us and he expects us to use them in his service in response to the leading instruction that he has given to us. Now, all of this I believe to be true. I understand that to be a very important um, 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 teaching on stewardship. But I think there is a place in this Lord, in this parable that the Lord shared that kind of pushes our understanding of, of stewardship one more step. And I think if we take that step, it can be life altering. We need to think more deeply about why Jesus used talents in his story. Now consider this, this kind of money that is represented by these talents was far greater wealth than anyone that Jesus was talking to could even imagine. Let's ask this question. What has the Lord entrusted you with that is of far greater value than anything you can imagine? Now, if you're like me, you probably didn't go to time, talents, and treasures as the response to that question. In my mind, at least, those things are valuable, but they're, they're not on the same scale as far beyond anything I could imagine. Where I did go in answering that question myself was to think about what Jesus has given to me that is of far greater value than anything I could imagine. And that's simply the gospel message that resulted in my coming to know him as Lord and Savior. The message of the gospel is what opened the door for me to know Jesus. This truly is the greatest gift that I have received. The investment of the gospel, I believe, is the greatest treasure that we as the people of the kingdom of God can have, and its returns are so far above anything else this world has to offer that you can't even compare them. This is the question that I want to leave you with today. Are you a good and faithful steward of the gospel? I believe that when we are good and faithful stewards of the gospel, that stewardship of these other areas, time, talents, and treasures, these all fall into place. If we are not investing in the gospel, if we're not seeing the gospel as this tremendous, greatest treasure, then I think we risk seeing only few returns nickel and dime returns for our investment instead of the kind of returns that hold value, kingdom value for eternity. This is what we must be about. Jesus said, you must be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Let us be good and faithful servants of the eternal gospel message, faithful to the call of our master.